Hey cruisers, welcome back. Today we are going to be giving you all a parent survival guide for cruising with kids and teens. And we're gonna talk a little bit about saving money when cruising with kids. This may not seem like an important and popular topic, but according to Clea, Cruise Lines International Association, which is the trade association for travel agents essentially globally, 42% of cruise parties travel with kids under the age of 18. So we think it's worth spending a Sunday morning talking about this. Special thanks to Amy T and Patriot Pastor, our subscribers who said, hey, you should do episodes on this. So Amy suggested the survival guide for parents and Patriot Pastor suggested the saving money portion. So I wanna thank them so much for that. My apologies to Patriot Pastor for scheduling this right in the middle of his church time. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Who does that to a pastor on a Sunday? So I'm sorry, Patriot Pastor, but this one is dedicated to you. So I hope everyone's doing well in the chat. It's been great seeing everyone. We do have a giveaway today. We'll show you what it is in about 10 minutes or so. So around 11.15, we'll tell you how to enter. This is gonna be United States only. Don't thumbs us down for it being US only. We're gonna keep you um, keep you guys full of international ones as well. We do it as much as we possibly can, but we have to get those items secured and ship them and all that good stuff. So let's get right into it. We're going to go ahead and start with our parent survival guide. We kind of have our top 10 things you need to know for cruising with kids and teens tonight. And the number one thing that we think you should consider is to be very, very careful about choosing your cruise line well. I think it's a good idea to choose a cruise line with lots of pools, slides, and activities. At least in my opinion, I think that's a good strategy for parents. So if you can, look at Royal Caribbean, look at Carnival, look at Norwegian. Those three cruise lines definitely lead the way in activities for kids, especially their newer ships. But in a lot of cases, they're retrofitting and upgrading their older ships as well to accommodate families. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is to very carefully plan and consider your itinerary. We think that some family-friendly examples are like the Caribbean, Mexico, and Alaska, while if you're considering more historic or port-intensive places like Europe, Canada, New England, or exotic cruises like the one we're doing in Asia, you might want to wait till the kids are just a little bit older. So hopefully if you're new to cruising, that helps you out a little bit. Number three is a kind of a practical tip, and that is to consider registering your kids online before you cruise. Usually in your cruise personalizer, as you're going through and you're entering all of your citizenship information and your preferences and all that good stuff, there'll be an opportunity for you to register your kids online. So if your child has a food allergy or a medication allergy, that would be the opportunity for you to enter the information in. Um, you can also sign some waivers sometimes online, depending on the cruise line. It really kind of depends. Now, that is not something you have to do. You can certainly do it when you get on the ship if you'd like, that's perfectly okay. Either way, we recommend that you, if you're traveling with kids and they plan on participating in one of the kids centers, that you show up to the children's centers on day one to either complete that registration process or attend the meet and greet and just get to know the staff there. Not all cruise lines open up for drop off on day one of a cruise. Some do, some don't, so that's something to just be aware of, but get those kids uh, registered. All right, number four tip is for parents with small children, and that is to be sure that you travel with some kind of a stroller. We recommend a small umbrella stroller that can be collapsed and folded up so that when you get back to your room, you can easily just put it in a corner. But if you have more than one child and you need to bring a double stroller, usually the cruise lines will accommodate you and allow you to store the stroller out in the hallway or you can bring it into room, although it takes up a lot of space. We definitely have learned this hard lesson uh, the hard way, I guess you could say, is more what I wanted. More what I wanted to communicate. When we went to Alaska with our son, when he was about four and a half, and we did not take a stroller, I really regretted it because there were times when we just wanted to walk around a town, and he needed those moments of rest and downtime. And it was hard for us to carry him when he got tired of walking or when he got a little bit bratty, which he did that particular trip. So I do recommend it. I know that it's hard to travel with a stroller, but it's something that we think is a really good idea. 
Next tip, number five tip for parents is to make sure that when you cruise, you pack your own medication for children. Let's hope that you don't need it, but we never cruise without pain reliever for our son, a little supply of cold medicine, and anything that your family might normally use or need at home, including a little first aid kit with Band-Aids, antibiotic uh, ointment like Neosporin, and things like that are just a really good idea because medication for children is not widely available on a cruise ship and if you do need to purchase it it can be very expensive so if your child gets a sudden fever it's just nice to have those things on hand definitely a good idea all right next tip is actually one that my mom wanted me to share with you guys um, she's visiting us for the weekend and she's like you know i think one of the best tips for for parents cruising with kids is to try to keep to their home routine as much as possible so try to keep your child on their nap schedule their bedtime schedule as much as you possibly can now that leads us to tip number seven for parents and that is if you're cruising with little ones who are still in a napping phase, we think it's a really good idea to book a cabin with a balcony. The reason why is because when the kid is asleep or napping or having some quiet time, the adults can kind of escape out to the balcony for a little bit of fresh air and some conversation. You don't feel like you have to be quiet. And I really feel like booking an inside cabin or an outside cabin without a balcony can really make parents feel trapped during nap time. So we think that that's something that's kind of non-negotiable. If you can afford it, pick a cruise where maybe you can afford the balcony, and I think you'll have a much better time. It's kind of a sanity saver for parents, especially on longer cruises. All right, tip number eight. If you are traveling with a baby, so a child under the age of about one, make sure you choose a ship with an onboard nursery if that's something that you're interested in. If you're interested in dropping off your infant, not all cruise lines offer drop-off nurseries for little ones. So let's talk a little bit more about it after I have a little sip of tea here. How's everybody doing in the chat, honey? Good? Awesome, okay, so Several cruise lines offer drop-off nurseries generally for an extra charge for under three babies. So it's usually an hourly rate. Now, Disney Cruise Line is one of the top lines for babies, and they offer full-service theme nurseries for kids ages six months to three years. They have nap areas, they have play areas. It's really, really great. So Disney is definitely considered the gold standard if you're cruising with a baby and you wanna do infant nursery drop-off. Royal Caribbean also has a similar program. It's called Royal Babies and Tots Nursery, and that's for ages six to 36 months on most of their ships, not all of their ships, but that's something you wanna check on beforehand if you're considering Royal Caribbean. Now, Norwegian offers a drop-off nursery only on Norwegian Escape at this time. So as of October 2018, that information is up to the minute. But, um, on all of Norwegian's ships, their Splash Academy, which is their kids program, does feature either a dedicated space for under threes to hang out with parents, or a staff-led interactive area where kids and parents can go at those age groups, but they're not necessarily drop-off center, they're just play areas. That's something that our child would love. He's not a big drop-off guy and never has been, but he would have loved a play area where mommy and daddy could stay with him, so I think that's really good. All right. Number nine tip today is no matter what age your child is, you wanna choose the right cruise line based on the age groupings for those kids centers. So if you aren't familiar with the way that cruise line um, kids centers work, all of them have different age ranges that can, can play a big part in your kid's happiness and comfort level. So we're gonna go over the kids, uh, the kids club age groups right now so that you can, um, make kind of an informed decision based on your child about what age group they're most comfortable in. And this might be something that's important to you. So Royal Caribbean has separate age groups for ages three to five. So three to five is their first one, six to eight, then nine to 11, then 12 to 14 and 15 to 17. So as you can see, Royal Caribbean has a lot of different age groups. They're not lumping big groups of ages together. So that's something that's very good for you to know um, when choosing a cruise line. Carnival's Camp Ocean is very similar. Pretty much those same groupings, but 
their drop off starts at the age of two instead of the age of three. And they're willing on Carnival. From what I understand, they'll even change diapers on Carnival. So that's something good for you to know. Norwegian Splash Academy has different age groups. So here they are. They are three to five, and I believe that's the seals. Ages six to nine, so they go a little bit higher than Royal Caribbean. Um, that's the seals. So turtles is three to five, seals is six to nine. Dolphins is ages kids, uh, excuse me, 10 to 12. And then their teens start at age 13 to 17 and they're all in one group called Entourage. So Holland America, excuse me, um, Norwegian does things a little bit differently. That's their grouping. Let's talk about Holland America and Princess because they offer fewer age groupings for the children. So they have a wider age range in each group. Princess groups together three to seven and then eight to 12 and 13 to 17. Holland America is just a little tiny bit different with their club hal. Their kids are grouped into three to six. Their tweens, they call it, which is seven to 12 and teens 13 to 17. So you have to think about whether or not your seven-year-old is gonna be okay with 11 and 12-year-olds. These are things that you have to consider when booking a cruise. So good for everybody to know. Our number 10 tip or point of discussion today is on sailing with teenagers. And I know I've been talking for a really long time. I feel like I'm kind of going on and on, but I really wanted to get all the tips out there before we went into the interactive kind of phase of the live stream. Remember that when you're cruising with teens, they have a lot of freedom on a ship, probably a lot more freedom than your teen or young teen is going to have at home. So you might want to set some ground rules and parameters for them because there are parents who don't see their kids except for when they come back to the room to go to sleep for an entire week. The kids make their own friends, they eat on their own, and you don't always know what they're doing. So please just be aware that um, I, I recommend that you have some conversations with them ahead of time. I can't even imagine this with my kid at this point in, in time right now because he's more of a, an attached child. He likes to be closer to us, but it is definitely something that you need to be aware of and plan for. So the, um, I think we talked enough about the teen age groups today, but let's, let's touch base on everyone in the chat for just a few moments, and then we'll switch over to the saving money with kids topic. And then I'd love to answer some questions a little bit later in the live stream. But as I promised, I do wanna show you the giveaway right now. Special thanks to Natasha, Natasha's 31 store. Natasha's here in the chat. Natasha, I didn't have time to get your link into this description before the live stream started, but I'm gonna do it afterwards. So if you want a link to it here, Natasha, feel free to go ahead and just pop it in the chat. And honey, would you pull up Natasha's photos of the items real quick for me? So we're gonna go ahead and show you two items that Natasha is giving away. This is United States only. And the first one is a mini zipper pouch in a print called Sea Turtle Tango. By the way, if you're interested in buying this item, it's really, really reasonable. It's only $12 and it is so cute. I love it. And then the second item that Natasha is giving away today is actually a cute luggage tag in my favorite print, one of my favorite prints. I have a few, I like ombre. Um, I like origami pop and I like ombre. So this luggage tag that Mr. Cruise Tips TV is gonna put up on the screen is in ombre stripe. It's very cute. These luggage tags are huge, by the way, guys. They're about this big, really, really big. They're very pretty and they have kind of like a little belt buckle style um, thing to attach it with. They're adorable. So I'm gonna pop into the chat and see everybody's doing for just a couple minutes. How are we doing, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Is everybody on their best behavior? No, no naughty chatters today. <laughs> Oh my goodness sakes. Um, I, Annie is offering what I think is a tip here. She said, our teens had to have dinner with us and we had check-in times with them. They were 16, 17, and 18 the last time we cruised with them and the rules still applied. I love that, Annie, and that's exactly the point that I was trying to make. I know that when we cruised um, as a family, it's been a while, it's probably been about gosh, I don't know, maybe 10, eight or 10 years. Um, my nephew was that age and he basically, they had a hard time. His parents had a hard time just getting him to have meals because um, uh, he wanted to just be with his friends the whole time. But the rule was he had to eat with, with us. Did I hear that Mike and Cheryl are gonna be grandparents again? Yes, there's a baby on the way for Mike and Cheryl, right? Congratulations, guys. Do you mean there's another one in the oven or that the baby's coming soon? Let me know. 
Okay. Um, oh yeah, Madeline's going on Anthem of the Seas on Super Bowl Sunday with 12 year old twins, you can't wait. Yeah, Kelly, I do have some tips for you on um, excursions for kids under five. One of the best things I think you can do, Kelly, with kids with um, under five is do a beach day. I think it's really great. You don't even have to necessarily book an excursion. You could just take a taxi to a nice local beach, depending on where you're cruising. Take some sand toys for the kid. Let them play in the water. Let them play at the beach. Don't spend a ton of money. Just have fun with them. That was actually going to be one of my money-saving tips today, is if you're cruising with kids, a great way to save money is just basically do, basically do a beach day. Ah, Judy Denny said you should remind your teens that there are cameras in all public areas. Oh, Judy, that is a good one. That is so true. Robin said, what is the best way to communicate on board with family members? Robin, we think that the best way to communicate on board with family members is basically to invest in the, um, the app, the chat app that's available on your cruise. If you're sailing with Carnival, Carnival's chat app is pretty well developed throughout the fleet. And Norwegian, I believe, is too. Royal Caribbean starting to get a little bit more um, a little bit more advanced with theirs as well, but if, if your kid is old enough to have their own device and chat with you, that's a good way to do it. Otherwise, the check-in times are probably gonna be the best way to go. They can also call the room. You can pick up a public phone and call the room anytime as well. Um, Vanessa said, advice for kids with special needs. Grandson is autistic and he loves boats. Very interested in tips. Yeah, Vanessa, one thing that we've heard is good for autistic children, and I don't have a lot of knowledge on this, but if they are sensitive to sound, to very loud noises, you want to communicate with the staff in advance before the muster drill because of the loud beeps and see if there's a way that they can accommodate them. I've heard parents say that they actually take headphones or ear coverings for their children during the muster drill. There's also um, an organization out there called, I wanna say it's called Autism on the Seas. Let me just Google it. Let me find it for you. And I want you to go check out this website. It's called autismontheseas.com. And they do offer staff assisted cruises um, for kids with autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, Tourette, cerebral palsy, and all kinds of different, um, different I guess you could say conditions. Um, so I think that you might want to check that out. They have a schedule of cruises available on um, their website, and that might be something that you want to consider. You know, food for thought. All right, I want to tell everybody how to enter the giveaway today. So this one, again, is United States only, so please only enter if you're from the U.S. if you don't mind. What we would love for you to do is in the chat, all you have to do is let us know if you have ever cruised with kids and on what cruise line and what ages. So it would say something like, yes, I've cruised with children before and I was on Royal Caribbean and my kid was eight. And if you haven't, just write never cruised with kids and that's all you have to do is just to enter. We wanna keep it really simple today. And we'll close that off probably around 11.25. It's 11.19 right now. Um, Holly said they cruised with their boys when they were teens. They loved it. You can't wait for your three-month-old granddaughter to be old enough to go with you. Yeah, and Holly, isn't cruising with babies the best thing ever? I think it's the, amazing because it's such a safe and contained environment for traveling with children, and I really think that it's one of the best methodologies out there. Zachary said, I grew up with autism and I still have to wear earplugs to the mustard drill. Zachary, thank you so much for sharing that. I did not know that. Um, Zachary, do you have any other tips for families with um, sailing with autism? Mr. Crucips TV, if, if Zachary replies, could you help me to find it? Um, I've asked him for more tips. We would love any more tips because this is a very, very um, common uh, question that we get and I don't feel super well informed, so I would really love your help. Okay. All right, Cute K said, can you use iMessage on Carnival's free Wi-Fi? No, technically you're not supposed to be able to. Some people have said that on Royal Caribbean, iMessage works on some ships, but it shouldn't work. It should not work if you're in airplane mode with Carnival's free um, Wi-Fi. Um, okay, that's a great question. Carrie said, what about car seats and taxis when getting to the beach? Carrie, in foreign countries, it's probably just not gonna happen. Um, I, I, you can ask for a car seat, but usually they don't have them available. Um, usually what we would do is just buckle our child into a seat belt. It's a tough decision as a parent. Um, you know, it's obviously it's a safety concern, but I will say that people put their kids on buses, in buses and on you know shuttles and trains and things like that all the time without seat belts. 
And in the United States, it's the law that we have to put our kids in seat belts and car seats and things like that. But in other countries, it isn't. So you kind of have to adapt to that particular country. I know it's difficult. Um, and we had a hard time with it when our son was little as well, but we would just put him in a seat belt. Okay. Um, Kelly said, Royal Caribbean is, gate, is great for ASD kids. They let you board right away and they waive potty training requirements for kids clubs. That's wonderful. Thank you for that tip. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Mike and Cheryl, you're so funny. Okay. I'm looking for some more, looking more, some more tips and questions coming in. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Gail wants to know, do husbands count as kids? I don't know, Gail. Does your husband count as a kid or a grown up? That's hilarious. That's so cute. I'm sure some do. <laughs> oh my goodness sakes. That's so funny. All right. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to some money saving tips. Um, I think we already segued into one of our money saving tips and that is to make your excursions a beach day because you don't need to spend hundred dollars a person when you have a four year old. Just go find a nice beach, buy a five dollar beach bucket kit, put it in your suitcase or you probably can even buy one on the cruise or in port somewhere and just go sunscreen up your child, put a really good hat and some sunglasses on them and let them get their feet dirty. I think it's such a good thing to do. All right, other ways to save money when you're cruising with kids is to take advantage of the children's clubs. With the exception of the infant areas, you guys, they're complimentary, they're included in your fare. Let your kid occupy themselves that way. Number two is to get to know the free offerings on the ship. A couple examples for you, ice cream. When is ice cream free in life? On a cruise, it is included with your cruise fare. Let your kid enjoy the free stuff, the ice cream, the activities, the pools, the slides. You know, Talk to them about it in advance and say, hey, look, you're going to have all this stuff available to you. Here's what we're not going to do. Number three, skip the soda package. Your kid, direct them to the lemonade machine. I don't think that the kids always need a soda package, and that can be $8 a day, $10 a day, sometimes more depending on the cruise line. Consider skipping it. They're not going to be deprived if they don't have soda. Um, number four, again, don't forget to pack medication for your kids. It could be a very big money trap if your child gets sick on board, so make sure you've got the essentials with you. Number five, set a limit for spending at places like the arcade. You need to have a conversation with your kid. They are not used to carrying around the equivalent of a credit card all the time, and they might go swipe crazy. Go to the front desk, talk to them about spending limits if that's possible. You might be able to set one. You might even be able to turn off spending for your kid. When you register them online, the cruise line will ask you, do you want this person to be able to charge things? You can just say no, and that might be a good idea. Just say no to the spending. With our son, we just have to have a little conversation with him about it every time and say, okay, you get two swipes a night after dinner and that's it. Um, obviously, educate them on the shopping in the stores and things like that. Let them know it is not unlimited. Another thing um, you might want to consider is if you are interested as adults, if you're interested in leaving your children on the ship during port days, you might want to consider a cruise line that offers um, their child care services on port days. Not all cruise lines do offer that, but it can also be another way to save money because you're not paying for an excursion for that child. Again, this would never work with my kid. He goes just about everywhere with us, but I think it's something that can definitely save money. So those are our money saving tips today. Does anybody else have some money saving tips they'd like to share? I'd love to read them out loud. All right, okay. Okay, Zachary said his mom scared him to prevent him from going swipe crazy. You had a limit, you went over, and you and it came out of your allowance. That's good parenting right there, right now, huh, Zachary? You think you agree with mom, but before you didn't. Okay, your um, Jennifer said my son has asthma, so we will be bringing his nebulizer. Um, how many bags are you allowed? Jennifer, there's really no bag limit on a cruise. Isn't that great? It's not like flying. You can take whatever you need. Don't worry. Annie Alaska said their teens brought their own money, which they were able to put on their sale and sign card. That's awesome. Judy said you told each of the kids how much they had to spend on the cruise. For example, $100 each. And if they don't spend it all on the ship, they get the rest when you get home. Now that is brilliant. So Cal Seth, are kids allowed on the group cruise? Yes, of course they are. We would never, ever, ever go on a cruise that, was, that didn't invite kids, grandmas, adult kids, whomever, as long as everyone's on their best behavior. You betcha. You betcha. 
Okay. All right, let's see here. Sarita said, I'm about to cruise with my six-year-old. Do I have to pay the deposit or holding fee for her sale and sign card if she will not be using it? Honestly, I don't know about that, Sarita. I think you're gonna have to ask when you get on board. Somebody else may be able to help. Zachary, thanks for following up um, on the autism question. You said you were a, a diagnosed after becoming an adult. Unfortunately, all you can say is the Kids Club are really useful because they, um, they they were good for you until you became a teen, and you, and you also advise bringing a portable gaming device. Okay, good. So taking a portable gaming device is your advice. That's good. Um, Amy said, what sort of things does your son take to dinner? Oh, Amy, that's a great question. Um, my son, he takes a backpack with some things in it, but I'll tell you, he doesn't always use them. In fact, most of the time he takes his backpack but doesn't use anything. Because of the age he's at now, he's more interactive with us, he's more interactive with the, the, the staff, and he's more interested in food. He's like got an appetite actually now. But in his backpack, he has Froggy, which is a traditional funny little frog we take and we put him on the water and we kind of play around with Froggy. We take funny pictures with him, it's just a tradition. Sometimes he'll take like a small gaming device or something or his Kindle to read. When he was littler, we would always take things for him to color with, but you have to be really careful. I recommend crayons and not pencils or pens because what he would do is he would, he would take the pen or pencil and he would get too stabby with it and he would go through the tablecloth and he would get stuff all over the tablecloth. So I highly recommend that you consider crayons instead. Um, his, the, his favorite thing to take to dinner though is his Kindle. Usually if there's downtime or something, he'll read for a few minutes, but he really doesn't do much with devices at dinner anymore. It was good when he was little and it was really hard for him to sit through a two or two and a half hour dinner. But honestly, what we would do more often when he was little is we would take him out. So we would have one course, and then in between courses, my husband would take him out and let him watch the band, or let him watch whatever was going on out in the atrium. And he liked that more than he did looking at something. He was not really a sit still. Um, Dawn says, how old is old enough to let kids roam the boat without an adult? I don't know, Dawn. I don't know the answer. Um, I feel like you see it as young as eight or nine. I think that's way too young. What do you guys think? In the chat, tell us, what do you think is the right age to let people roam? Angel, thank you so much for the super chat. That was really sweet. Okay, let me know, guys. What do you think? Uh, thank you, Gail. Mr. Junior is a very good kid. He's a gentleman, and he, when people meet him, they are impressed by his manners. He's a really good little boy. He's also very... Um, He's got pretty good social skills. He was very shy for a while there, but he's starting to put his hand out and say, nice to meet you and introduce himself, ask people's names, have a conversation. He's pretty good, doesn't always maintain eye contact, but we're working on that too. Okay, so let's see if everybody's answering this question. What do you think is the age that they can be out and roaming? I'm not seeing a lot of people answering that just yet, but we'll see. Let's go ahead and pick our winner now, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, um, from that, from that, uh, question segment. Okay, so Julie said her son was 11. Judy, okay, Julie says 11. Judy says 13 or older for roaming about 13 sounds about right to me. I feel like that's about right. Michelle says 12. Yeah, I think 12, 13. Haha. <laughs> South Philly girl says 18. Cheryl said 12. Brenda said 18. Christine said 13 or older. Deosha said freshman in high school, 14. Marlon fishing and diving said 14. Okay. Very good answers, you guys. Zachary, what your brother? You and your brother started roaming at seven or eight with the walkie-talkie. See, now that's that's if you have a sibling, I think they can roam sooner because they're together and they're you know they're it's a little more safe. Karen said depends on the child, not younger than ten or twelve. Yeah. Okay. Alicia said fourteen, fifteen. Maureen said twelve. I'm seeing a lot of eleven to twelves in here. Holly said fourteen. Yeah. Oh, Willie Orca has a good tip, guys. Wait to book your cruise when they offer kids sale free. Yes, a lot of cruise lines do that. Norwegian does it, MSC does it. Excellent tip. Jim said 15-ish, yep. Depends on the kid, says seize the day. Yes, depends on the kid. I think that's so true, you guys. It really depends on the maturity level. I love that we're all sort of just you know being honest about it here. Okay, all right, we have a winner. Today's winner of Natasha's Beautiful Items is Lindsay McKinney. Congratulations, Lindsay. Email me your mailing address at sherry, S-H-E-R-I, at cruisetipstv.com. And everybody can repeat after me. Don't leave your address in the chat, please. Just email me. Okay, good job. Deosha Smith, let's see here. Um, Deosha said, 
your Elise is already saving her money to spend in cherry on top. Oh, I love cherry on top, Deosha. You know I love the name Elise. Um, my son loves cherry on top, and I think that's a great little reward for kids at the end of a cruise is to let them go and get some candy to take home. Melissa, good tip. Melissa said, let your kids relax and ask them what they want to do. Yeah, Melissa, I think so. Um, I think when our, our son's going to be cruising on his birthday soon, and I think for that day, I really want to let him kind of lead the way and, and do what he wants to do that day. All right, everybody, this has been super fun. We're gonna wrap up in just a few moments. Does anybody have any questions that we haven't answered? I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to general questions for just a couple more minutes, and you all can let me know if I've missed you. If, if you'd like, if I've missed a question and you're no longer here, or if you're watching this on replay, message me over on Facebook at Cruise Tips TV, and we'll do our best to answer. Okay. Brashilda said, Royal Caribbean put you in a quiet room for your son with autism. They also allowed you to go to the sweets restaurant for lunch and dinner, although your mini suite could, could only have dinner there. That's very nice of them to accommodate your child in that way. Thank you so much, Night Audit, for reminding everybody to hit the like button. I appreciate it. Dance Moms Magic says, what are your favorite cruise lines for kids? Right now, for me, favorite cruise line for kids is probably Norwegian um, because my son had the time of his life in um, their kid center. I think it's, is it, what's it called again on, it's a Splash Academy. My son really felt well taken care of in the kid center and I love that they do sports with the kids too. It's not just video games the whole time. They got him up and they played Gaga Ball and they did all kinds of things and it was very memorable for him. They, he made me a beaded necklace one day. So I'm gonna go, if I had to vote right now, I'm gonna say Norwegian. Favorite cruise line for kids. Although my son has had a blast on, he would say his favorite cruise line for kids is probably Royal Caribbean because he likes the arcade. I would say he had a ton of fun on MSC and he loves Carnival. So he is going to vote for any of those four that I just mentioned. So Norwegian, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, or MSC have all been a blast for him. Okay. Oh, I love that tip. Isabel has a tip. Do a cruise countdown with your kids pre-cruise. It's so much fun. That is such a good tip, Isabel. I love it. Um, Gail said, speaking of kids, how come Junior never is open into the live chat with you. You mean like typing in the chat? Gail, he would like to actually, but we don't really want to expose him on YouTube very much. We're trying to kind of, you know, wait until he's a little bit older, but I think he would have fun in the chat and maybe we'll, maybe we'll open up a nice little junior editor account for him or something and let him do that. That's not a bad idea. We'd have to set some ground rules for him too. He's a little stinker, but that's, that's kind of fun. What do you think, Mr. Chris TV? Would you let him chat? Go into the chat under an account. Okay, Gail, that's a fun idea. We'll ask him if he wants to. I really like that. But again, you know how we are. We like to protect him. Um, you guys are so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh, Dance Mom's Magic. Yeah, Disney is of course the gold standard for cruising with families. But I really, you know, the reason we don't talk about it as much is because of the price. It's just not as accessible for a lot of people. But if you can find a deal, if you can save up, Disney is really the gold standard for sure. We haven't been on Disney Dance Mom's Magic, but I've heard, heard it's absolutely wonderful. Okay. I see some more questions coming in. I don't want to miss them. Carol has a tip. She said, Disney is great for kids, plus there are characters who call the kids before the cruise. Yes. I love that. That's so cute. Carol, they call them on the phone? That's so cute. All right. You guys are funny. I think that Anita said, you're thinking of leaving your older kids in the cabin for an hour after they go to bed so you can get a quiet nightcap. Is it okay? Yeah, it's totally okay. Anita, like you said, if they're older, you can leave them in the room for a little bit. I think that you know, you're going to know as a parent when it's okay to do that. I think um, we all just have to use our best judgment. But yeah, it's not, it's not discouraged. For younger kids, I wouldn't do it. But for older kids, yeah, you can totally do it. it I wouldn't do it in a hotel on land, but I would do it on a cruise. Okay. Looking for more questions. Um, Boots and Bling, 18 months too young for a cruise? Um, no, I don't think so. In fact, I think one of our best cruises with our son was when he was 18 months old. He had learned to walk and he was just so excited to be able to toddle around the whole ship and he slept like a baby and it was amazing. Melissa, I got my blouse at TJ Maxx. It's a free people blouse, but it was deeply discounted. Normally I don't spend the money on free people, but I love this shirt. It's really snug through the waist. Thank you. Jim Ring, yes, thank you so much for asking. We did get my mama a new phone yesterday. She she rarely gets new phones, so she had the five, the iPhone five, huh, four? She had the iPhone four. So we upgraded her yesterday to an iPhone XS, right, honey? 
So she has the same phone as I do now, and she's doing really well with it. Mr. Cruise Tips TV um, did an iCloud transfer, got everything taken care of for her. So she was worried about losing all of her settings, and she lost nothing, and she's really happy. So that's what we did yesterday, and then we went out for Korean barbecue, and then I slept for 10 hours. It was amazing. I went to bed at, at 9, and I woke up at 7. It was so good. Um, so yeah, thanks, Jim. That was really sweet. Um, Oh, Dawn said, are the steakhouse upcharge items as good as the restaurant? Usually the steakhouse upcharge items are better than the restaurant because they're from the steakhouse, so yes. Um, Boots and Bling, we didn't discuss the earliest age to bring a child, but I would take mine at six months if I could. My son's first cruise was at the age of one year old and it was wonderful, but I will say 18 months was a real sweet spot for us. We really enjoyed, he was a little bit, he was more mobile, but he wasn't crawling on the dirty floor kind of mobile, he was walking. It was great. Um, I think Kaylee, we probably just answered your question as well. How young is too young? I would do six months, Kaylee, but you have to decide on that yourself. I know. Okay. Um, Kelly has a tip for us today. She said they booked Royal Caribbean Kids Sell Free and tip is to bring a grandparent. You bring your mom to help. Boy, isn't that wonderful? I know. It's so nice. Even if the, you know, if the grandparent only helps a little bit, like when the parents go out to dinner or just need to go for a walk or something, it can be really nice. We enjoyed having my mom with us on our Panama Canal cruise. Matthew, are we going on Carnival Panorama? Yeah, we plan to, but we're not booked on it yet. We've learned a lesson about booking cruises too far in advance, and we're going to wait a while and see if we, you know, see what our life looks like around the time that it comes out. I will, Mike and Cheryl, I'll give mom your love for sure. I know, Seth, I love Korean barbecue too. It's so good. We had um, brisket and pork bulgogi, and my mom and I got lettuce wraps to put the meat, to wrap the meat in, and my son goes through the radishes, the banchan radishes, like crazy, and my husband likes the kimchi pancakes, so those are some of his favorite things. Okay, Kit says, we would like to book a mini suite for ourselves and an interior directly across the hall for your 16 and 17 year old boys. Yes, it would absolutely be okay. When you book it, you may have to book an adult in each cabin on paper, but they know that people swap and put the kids alone all the time. People do it all the time. So even if the cruise line tells you it's not, it's frowned upon or you can't do it, you can. Um, I'm going to look for some more questions. I know, Linda, 10 hours of sleep. Laurel, you kept your iPhone 4 until it died. Yeah, my mom's was looking like that. It's like this big. It was this small. I'm like, mom, mom, she's like, I really want to make sure I get a screen I can see. And we're like, you've been looking at a screen that's this big. Any phone is going to be better than that, honey. And she's like, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, Jim, we're always keeping mama happy. That's right. She's a sweetheart. We love her. Uh, Vanessa, it wasn't sake that we were drinking. It was um, soju. And no, it, I didn't pass out from that. I did have a good amount of soju. My mom and I shared a bottle. We didn't finish the soju, but I definitely um, was enjoying myself. But I was just exhausted, I think. Um, combination of busy at work and then Vlogtoberfest is, you know, we're on every day. We're on camera every day. I, it does wear me out a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm a little, bit, a little bit tired lately, but I'm doing good. Okay. I think we're pretty caught up on questions today. I'm gonna to scroll down and just double check because we don't have to rush off. Dawn, you are so welcome. Thank you for the kind words. We appreciate that. Zachary said his parents put his brother and him in an inside cabin on deck three while they got a junior suite high up on another deck from themselves. They always got a separate cabin. El Dalmas have a wonderful cruise with both sets of grandparents. That's so cute, Judy. Soju knocks you. Yeah, it, it can knock you out too. My mom doesn't drink normally at home. She really doesn't. And so when she comes to visit us, we always go out for Korean barbecue and soju and her little cheeks turn red after the first shot glass full. It's so cute. So funny. Okay. Vanessa, enrollment in the Academy is amazing. We have over 300 people enrolled. We were hoping for 100 and we have 300. I think I'm going to sneeze, by the way. Um, so it's going incredibly well. And the student Facebook page has been incredible. I pop in and see how everyone's doing, and I see people helping each other every day. Um, excursion ideas, advice on this, advice on that. It's unbelievably successful, and we're so incredibly thrilled. I've had to learn to do a little bit of tech support because we are the tech support for the, pla for the platform. Um, Thinkific doesn't really offer student tech support, so I've been, it's really been good for me, actually. I've been learning how to troubleshoot iPhones and, um, 
And desktop situations, luckily, there really aren't big problems. It's usually just you know, someone either needs to swipe on their iPhone to get the lessons to play or they need to restart their browser, and that's pretty much the extent of the problems. But all week I've been like, oh, I gotta figure out the answer to that question, but it has been absolutely amazing. And I really am glad that we did it because we just can't film um, sequential information and put it out here on YouTube in that way. And people are really liking the checklist. They're loving the packing checklist. They're loving the to-do list. So it's going really well. Thank you so much for asking. Um, <laughs> yeah, you doing te tech support too, Seth? Yeah, tell me more about it. Um, Jep Gelmick wants tips for cruising with a diabetic tween. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Um, I have a very, very dear friend who's type one diabetic. And I think that the key is really communicating um, on day one with your maitre d. And if you, if she does even have, or she or he has dietary restrictions, I'm not sure what type of diabetes we're talking about here, but communicate with the dining room um, staff. I think you're actually going to find that A, your teen has more food options than they do at home. And it's going to be, you know, even easier for you than having to worry about preparing food all the time at home because you'll have a lot of choices. You're going to find that the dining room staff will be extremely accommodating. You may also want to stop by the medical center early in the cruise and just introduce yourself and see if there if there was an emergency, ask them what the procedures are and just get comfortable. But hopefully that's been helpful for you. I don't have a lot of information on the extent of the diabetes or the type, but um, I, hope that, I hope that the cruise is wonderful for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Michelle DeBoard, I'm glad you're enjoying the students and coaches Facebook page. If anyone here in the chat wants to join as a coach, um, just go to our Facebook page, look for the group and ask to join. We just ask that you help out answering questions from newbies and be there to support people when they have questions. But anyone is welcome to join that group without um, enrolling in the course, just so you guys know. Shorty says, when is it too early to book flights abroad? We're looking at our flights to Rome in September. Is it too soon? You mean next September? If you can book them, book them now. You will save an enormous amount of money, but make sure you do not book a non-refundable fare. Pick a flexible fare. If you're sailing with a cruise line that allows you to book with the cruise line, like Princess, for example, um, Easy Air, get in there and get it done and just change it later. But I don't know if flights for September will be available to you yet, but I would try it. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Um, oh, okay, Crazy Cat Traveler regarding the flight says Kayak has flights as late as October, so check out kayak.com. Good tip. There's so many good tips right now. Okay, checking for more questions. Angie said her husband's diabetic and it was pretty easy to make a healthy meal out of the buffet. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, type one. Okay, good. Yeah, I think she's. I think your teen's going to do just great. Just communicate with the dining room staff and you're going to have so much choice. It will be amazing. All right. I think we're getting ready to wrap up here. Any more questions, Mr. Crisps TV, that I've missed? No? Okay, sounds good. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I've forgotten what our topic is tomorrow night, but let me jump into my Google Docs and find out what we're talking about tomorrow. I know that we are live tomorrow night, Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time right back here. Can you guys believe we're only about a week and a half out from the end of October? Hi, yi, yi. How did that happen? It's crazy. Can't believe how fast the month has flown by for all of us. It's really weird. What is tomorrow night's topic? Let me find it. Oh, I like tomorrow night's topic. This one's really fun. It's staying on the ship while the ship is in port. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do some brainstorming about why people would wanna stay on the ship while it's in port and ideas of things to do and what ports you might wanna do that in. Alessia, pets are generally not allowed on cruises unless they are bona fide service animals. Um, and the cruise lines are tightening down their definition of what that is. I have seen pets on cruises, but they're not pets, they're service animals. Um, and, or unless you're sailing on Cunard, which does have a kennel for their transatlantics, but that's a totally different story. All right, cool. So we'll see you all back here tomorrow night, Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific. I just wanna thank everybody for all the tips and help today here in the chat. We appreciate all of you. We're having so much fun during Vlogtober. Special thanks again to Natasha for the beautiful giveaway. And Angie, I will take the, nest, uh, the rest of the day off because guess what I got? I got an Instant Pot yesterday at Costco. 
So I think my mom and I are going to experiment with an Instapot recipe. So I'm excited about that. But thank you very much for all your support and love, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night. Well, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Hey, click me to subscribe.